This is just a quick getting started guide to circle on, just so you can get a pattern playing with the new machine straight out of the box. When you power on the machine for the first time, the memory will have been wiped, so all you'll have is one empty song. When you power on, it comes up in the song screen. You see we have we have three main pages in the uh, play mode, which are song, scene, and track. We'll start off in song. What we're going to do is. Uh, create a new pattern. Before we do that we need to assign an instrument to a track. Before we do that we need to define that instrument. That's done on the track page so press the track key and take you to this page. There's three values on there. You've got a track number, instrument assignment and the pattern that's uh, assigned to this track. They're all both empty at the moment. We're on track one here. You can select which track you're looking at by pressing the encoders above the keys, the step keys, or you can turn the barred encoder and that scrolls you through these tracks. At the moment we're set up with 32 tracks. You'll see when I've gone off the end of the first bank of 16 I go on to another bank of 16. Uh, the step keys mute and unmute play back on those tracks, but if, if a, a track doesn't have a pattern assigned to it, the key will only the LED only lights up dimly to indicate that nothing's actually going to play on that track. So the first thing we need to do is assign an instrument. These values, the, the value that's highlighted is the one that you're going to edit if you press the uh, value encoder here. You can turn the value encoder to move the selection to a different value, so move that value encoder so the instrument is highlighted and then press the encoder. That brings up the instrument list which is empty on a new machine. You've got the option there for create new. So press the value encoder again. And that brings us to the instrument definition page. The graphic that's on here and these LEDs along the keys indicate that it's in a text input mode. So you see I'm going to set this up for my uh, mini. So I'm going to put in mini in there. Press enter. It's a press of the value encoder to enter that name. We're still in the uh, instrument definition page. Again, it's a question of uh, turning the value encoder to step through these different values. So I'm going to set the MIDI port here. There's five hardware MIDI ports, so turning that encoder, once you've pressed it to, to bring up those little arrows to show that you're, you're changing the value rather than moving the selection. You see we can scroll through the different MIDI ports. I've got the MIDI on the CV interface. There are also the USB ports in there. So I'm going to select the CV port and press save. That's all I need to do to set up my mini. Uh, if I were to press that again on the track you'll see that I've got a list of the, the current instruments that are defined. The mini is the one that's currently selected. So I might want to, to create a different instrument for, my, for another track while I'm here. So I go to create new, press enter again. Uh, this time I'll create an uh, instrument from a Jupiter 8. Uh, you'll see that the row symbol there for 1, 2, 3 in the row, if you press the row encoder that switches you over just the numbers in the keys which line up with the numbers that are on them so I can just type in 8 there and press enter. Now my, my Jupiter is on MIDI port 3, channel 2, so press that, turn to 2, press again. The, the no transpose and no force to scale are uh, uh, an instrument level defeat of any transposition or forcing to scale that's applied to that instrument, which really applies to instrument synths that you're using uh, for drum sounds where you don't want the notes moved about. So I'll just save that there. You see I've now got Jupiter 8 assigned to this uh, particular track, but I'll just go back to my mini Moog assignment. Turn the value encoder now so that we're on the pattern selection. If you press there, if there were patterns created already, then you would have a list of those patterns to choose from. As it is, I've can just get the choice of creating a P3 pattern or creating a CK pattern. We'll look at the CK pattern in a later video. I'll turn that round to P3 pattern. Press the encoder there. It creates a blank, empty pattern for me and calls it pattern 1. Now the way that you edit a pattern is just by pressing the pattern key. The pattern key will take you to pattern edit of the pattern 
on the, the track that you've currently got selected. So there's no patterns there. If you're if you're on a track and there's no pattern assigned and you press pattern, then it will automatically create a P3 format pattern for you. And you'll see that's created pattern two there on track two. Whereas I had, uh, I had manually explicitly created pattern one. So you can do it either way. If I press pattern here, my instrument's assigned mini, the track is unmuted, the LED's on so the track is active. I'll press the pattern key and it takes me into pattern edit mode. The top row here, I've got the pattern name, the direction, time base, and the current bar number and length of the pattern in bars. A P3 pattern can be up to 16 bars in length. The value encoder here scrolls between the pattern name, pattern direction and time base value here. And again you just press that encoder to edit that value. So when you press it on the direction there, you get a pop down list of the different direction modes. So if I press play now, you'll see the little scanning blip along there shows me the direction this pattern is going in so I could choose maybe reverse mode and you'll see that the LEDs go in the opposite direction. I could choose the random mode and it jumps about. We'll just stick with forward for just now. Uh, the same applies to the, the T-Base setting. If you choose the T-Base field and press the encoder you get a scrolling list of these different T-Base values. It doesn't change the value, it stays at 16 which was the default until I go to a different field, different value there and select that value. And then you'll see that the, uh, the speed that the LED is moving at has slowed right down because we're at a lower time base setting. The pattern is automatically resynchronized each time you change the time base setting. But we'll come to that later. And I want to be in 16. The lower part of this display is showing me all the step values for this pattern. There's only one bar, so there are 16 steps. This, uh, in this mode it's showing me every value for the one step, and that's the step that's indicated with the red LED below the encoder. You can press the different encoders to select the different steps, but uh, obviously all the different steps are um, the same in a blank pattern. You change the values by turning obviously the step encoders. If you just turn the step encoder normally you'll, you'll move one note at a time on the note. If I were to hold the encoder in and turn it then you'll see that it moves me an octave at a time. The row encoder is used in pattern edit to move between the different values which are, are, I think of as rows in the pattern. So the pattern has a note row, velocity row, length row, delay row and then the four auxiliary rows. And the row key is, is scrolling between all of those. Uh, the alternative view of the pattern, pattern edit, you can get to by pressing the row encoder and that switches you to what we call the wide view where you can see just the one value, so in this case it's note, but you can see the note value for every step in the pattern. This is in a little bar graph. You'll see that um, when I turn some steps on by pressing the step keys, the bars will be filled in to indicate that those steps are on as well. And it gives you it helps you uh, line up the, the step keys here with the uh, narrower view on the screen. Just stop that just now so you can hear what I'm saying. So we've got note there. Again, just as with the uh, the, the, the other view, if you turn the row encoder, you will step through the different um, values, but looking at that value for every step of the pattern. So we've got note, velocity. Uh, on this particular synth, velocity is mapped to the filter, so I can uh, turn these velocities down. And 
the velocity, if you, you just turn the encoder, you get one step at a time. If you press in the encoder, hold it and turn it whilst it's pressed in, then you move 10 at a time, which is a much quicker way to make course adjustments. So as I say, that's, the velocity is mapped to filter cutoff in this synth. The next value we've got is the, the length. This is the gate length, so this is the, the proportion of each step that the note will stay on for. This is slightly different to if you're familiar with P3. On P3 the value was from 1 to 11. And that was because each step was divided into 12. The timing resolution is four times higher on circlons, so each step is divided into 48 with a default length of 24. So the, the length of 24 means that the, the note stays on for half of the duration of that step. So I just have one note playing just now. Uh, at this point, I can show you if you want to if you want to reduce the length of the pattern so that that note plays more quickly, you could use the last key here. So I'm just going to hold last. Uh, press step 4. Whilst I'm holding the last key you'll, it shows me how long this particular pattern is. So if I've set the last step to 4 the pattern will only play those 4 steps. So you see here we're in 24. Too long a release time on that. Okay, so one tick is uh, very short. I'm going to just put that note up so it's clearer. So we can go from a, a very short note. This is one difference with P3. On the, on the P3, you, you, a note couldn't be any longer than the length of the step it was in but on Circlon. Um, once you've gone beyond the 47 ticks, it starts going up in slightly larger chunks. Now that note's holding forever because that note is set to a length of four steps. If I set the last step of the pattern back up to 16, you see that one step can go to I can set that note to be up to 16 steps in length. Now this particular instrument is uh, monophonic, so if I were to have another if I were to have another gate on there, then it's gonna use uh, it's gonna apply legato glide that I've set up in that particular synth. What's happening there is that this first note is lasting for oh, I'll set it to four. So the gate length is four there. This other note will play for half the step, but it doesn't stop this first note playing. The playback is polyphonic, so that the pattern notes can overlap. Okay, so that covers uh, the basics, I think. <laughs>